If I was starting a comic book collection today and I only had $100 to do it, what books would I pick? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you my top 10. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my top 10 books that I would pick if I was starting a comic book collection today and I only had a budget of $100 to do it. This is an idea for a video that has been actually requested on my channel quite a few times in the comments. And I'm really, really excited to have this video here today and show you guys the books that I would pick and hopefully you guys enjoy it. But before I get into the books, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. But with that being said, let us get into the video here today and you know comic book collecting is a really expensive hobby but there are still a lot of great books that you can get for cheap so in this video I'm gonna go over my top 10 now a couple of caveats here I'm giving you guys estimated price windows on these things you know I think in ideal situations you'd be able to find them on the low and then maybe if you really were impatient you needed to have it right now today you could buy it for a certain price on ebay but generally speaking i do believe you can put this collection together for a hundred dollars or so uh, also a little bit of a caveat if i really only had a hundred dollars to put a comic book collection together i would very much consider just buying one comic book for you know one hundred dollars or maybe two for fifty something like that but you know that wouldn't really be a fun video so let's put the shun in collection now the other little caveat i have to declare is the goals of my my collection. For starters, I want this collection to always appreciate in value, right? I never want to lose out on my $100 investment. Uh, secondly, I want it to be a collection that I feel like is respected by comic book collectors. And lastly, although I am a fan of the characters and books I'm going to show you, I didn't index too hard on my personal favorite characters. I'm really looking at this from a objective standpoint. But with that said, let us get into the first book that I would actually start my collection with. And that is actually going to be Web of Spider-Man number one one from 1984. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the first issue of the Web of Spider-Man series written by Louis Simonson. But most importantly, it has that beautiful black suit cover by Charles Vess. And I think that this book is something that is really, really respected in the comic book community. I think that this is always going to be a desired key simply due to the fact that it has one of the best covers in all of the copper age of comic books. Now, there is some speculative value in that this is actually the last last time that the symbiote would be attached to Spider-Man before going on to Venom. So, you know, it feels like maybe one day in the future we're going to get some kind of Tom Holland symbiote Spider-Man suit thing. And I feel like this book is going to spike because of that. You know, anything that has symbiote Spider-Man on the cover is going to be desirable at that time. But if we take that part out of the equation, this is still one of the most beautiful covers you'll ever see in person. And something that I would absolutely deem as sort of the crown jewel of my $100 collection. Now, speaking of prices, here I have right there at the bottom price window 15 to 20 dollars you know when I go into eBay looking for this thing I can find buy it now sitting around the you know 13 14 15 dollar range depending on how nitpicky you are with the grade in this video I'm concerned with books that present like nicely but I'm not worried about getting 9.8 so I think you can find this book at a pretty good deal and I actually think that if you actually go out hunting in LCSs you might be able to find it for cheaper so 15 to 20 dollars is what I'm looking to spend for this book and it would be one of the best books in my collection all right let's go on now to the next book here. And the next book is actually going to be Spider-Gwen number one from 2015, written by Jason Latour. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first solo series for Spider-Gwen. Now, this is a book that has definitely heated up recently due to a lot of speculation with the Into the Spider-Verse film. But I've talked about this book on the channel before, and I think that this is one of the great books to have in your collection. I think Spider-Gwen is only just becoming uh, the major character that she can be. I think, you know, 20 years from now, spider Gwen is going to be one of the most household name, biggest characters in all of Marvel comic books. And this right here being her first solo series is a really, really important book to her character's history. It's an amazing cover. It's a great character. And this is one that I absolutely want to have in my collection. Now, this book also features some minor bonus first appearances. So maybe as we start to get spider Gwen into different, you know, uh, movies and TV shows and things like that, those peripheral characters will play a role. But at the end of the day, we're buying this book for the cover and the fact that it says Spider Gwen right there in the title. Price window, I have this one written down at between $17 to $26. I've seen this book in LCS is being sold for $10. I've seen Buy It Now is right now on eBay being sold for you know $15, $16. So I think depending on where you can find this book, if you can find it in that window, it's going to fit nicely into your $100 budget. 
All right, let's go on now to the third book I'm putting together for this collection. And the third book I'm looking at is X-Men number 11 from 1992. This is just the classic Jim Lee cover from that X-Men series that came out in the 90s. And this one, I think, reeks of nostalgia. Now, this book is written by Joe Quesada and, of course, drawn by Jim Lee. And one of the things I love about this book is simply just the cover. I think that this brings so many member berries to all the 90s collectors, you know, everyone who grew up watching that X-Men cartoon. This is sort of like the best iteration you can get of that team on a cover. Now there is the X-Men Adventure series, which blew up recently in the market, but I would actually argue that this is a better book to own simply due to the fact that this came out before the X-Men Adventures book. And also this is actually in Marvel continuity. The X-Men Adventures book is based off of the animated show, which takes place on a different earth. Whereas this one actually does take place in continuity and that makes it more desirable in my opinion, as a comic book collector. Now, price window for this one is between seven to $16. I've seen this in LCS as being sold for five. I've found it on Buy It Now's on eBay around the you know $10 range. I've seen it go up to 15. So if I can find this book anywhere in that window, I am definitely pulling the trigger on this one because I think that this is an absolutely beautiful cover and one that would look really stunning in a slab. And speaking of slabs, let's take a minute to talk about the sponsor of our video, MySlabs.com. Now, for those who don't know, MySlabs.com is an online marketplace that specializes in graded collectibles. And even though they got a lot of expensive books, they also have a bunch of slabs for under $100. So maybe you're someone who wants to go big by starting your collection and you wanna start off with a slab. Well, you can absolutely find a slab on there for less than $100. And one of the reasons for that is that you can see right there, 1% fees for sellers. So sellers can make better deals with buyers and everyone gets to keep more money in their pockets. I'm going to play this little commercial for you guys and I will see you on the other end. Tired of paying 10%, 15% or more to sell your cards, comics and digital collectibles? How does 1% sound? Too good to be true? Well, not anymore. MySlabs.com is the web's premier user-driven marketplace for buying and selling slabbed cards, sealed wax and now slab comics and digital collectibles. So the next time you're forced to pay 10% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com and join the 1% revolution. Definitely go check out MySlabs.com and see if it's the marketplace for you. And also they have a very special holiday giveaway going on right now. All you gotta do is follow their Instagram, like and share the post, and you have a chance to win this incredible, amazing Spider-Man 300 in a 9.0 grade. Talk about starting your collection off with a bang. If you have first appearance of Venom in your collection, you're definitely doing well. So definitely go check out MySlabs.com, check out their Instagram, and give yourself a chance to win this book. All right, let's move on now to my next pick. And my next pick is actually gonna be Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine number one from 1988, that classic cover with the brown suit. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, you guys know this is the first issue of the Marvel Presents ongoing series. And I think that this is a really great book to own. I think that the fact that it's a number one issue, that it's got a great Wolverine cover on it, and it's really affordable, makes it a great addition to anybody's comic book collection. We all know that the Wolverine covers are absolutely going to the moon. And this is a still a special key book in my opinion. One of the other things about this book is that it actually has a little sleeper speculative value in it, in so much that there's actually a first appearance of a fear lord known as Kalaku. And in Shang-Chi, we actually she got an introduction into the Fear Lord. So on top of the fact that this is just a great number one issue for a great nostalgic series featuring Wolverine, and it has a little bit of speculative value, makes this a great book to have. And the price window you can see right there, I have this one between eight and $16. This is a book that I think you can actually find in dollar bins, but if you wanted to get on eBay today, you can definitely find it around that price range. All right, moving on now to my fifth book. And my fifth book is actually gonna be War Machine number one from 1994. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first War Machine ongoing series. That's the first time you're going to see War Machine right there in the title. This is a book written by Len Kaminsky and features this awesome black and white 
cover. Now, next year, we all know we're going to be getting Armor Wars, and Rhodey is going to play a major role in that. And one of the issues with War Machine is that, you know, he makes his first appearance, or the armor makes its first appearance, but it's worn by Tony Stark. And it's not till West Coast Avengers, where War Machine takes up the mantle of War Machine, but it's not until this book right here that actually features War Machine in the title, which makes this a desirable collector item for this character. And I think that this is a very underrated book, underrated character, and underrated cover. Now, price window for this one is between five to $10. I think that this is a book that you can absolutely find in dollar bins, but if you want it to go onto eBay now, you can certainly have it around that price. All right, let's go on now to my sixth pick here. My sixth pick is going to be Amazing Spider-Man number 347 from 1991. And what is the significance of this? Well, this of course is the classic Eric Larson cover that features the Venom Shakespeare homage. Now, of course, this is a book written by David Micheleni, and I like this book simply due to the cover. I actually think that at some point in the future, we're going to see Venom and Spider-Man in a film, and I think that when we do see that, all the books that feature these two characters together are gonna get hot again. There's also a little bit of speculative value in so much that this has the first appearance of Venom Island. Now, location spec, not really too big of an issue, but it does add a little bit of flavor to this book right here. Venom is a very cool character, and this is one of his best covers, in my opinion. Now, one thing to point out is that you have to be careful about buying the facsimile for this one, because there are a lot of reprints of this that look exactly like the original. But if you're crafty and you are able to find it, you can find the original book being sold between, you know, eight to $17, which I have right there on the price window. I think that you can find this one on eBay, you know, buy it now is for that price if you're lucky. All right, going on now to my seventh book here, I'm going to talk about X Factor number one from 1986. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first team appearance of X Factor. Of course, X Factor was the governmental side of the X-Men team reformed by Cyclops, bringing back the original members of the X-Men. Uh, and this is a book written by Bob Layton. Now, I actually think that when we think about the MCU, we think about all the speculation of what could be coming with the X characters, etc. I do think it's very, very possible that they bring in the X Factor team. I think that this is one that can absolutely grow in value over time. I also just like the fact that this is the number number one issue of the X Factor series. A great 80s run uh, that was mostly shepherded by Louis Simonson. A really, really great book. A really, really great read. And one of the things that's best about this book is you can see price window right there between six to $15. I mean, this is definitely a book you can find in dollar bins at LCSs. You can see it in back bins, you know, price for $5 or so. And you can do buy it nows for this thing at that same price. I was able to find one earlier today uh, around $6, which actually included shipping. So this is definitely a a great book, in my opinion, and one that would be nice to have in a collection. And speaking of X-Factor, my number eight pick is actually going to be X-Factor number 71 from 1991. Now, if I'm putting together a collection of 10 books here, I want a couple sleeper picks, and this is going to be the sleeper dollar bin pick that I'm going to have for myself. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of the new X-Factor team. A lot of people identify this team as being X-Factor even more than that of the Cyclops team. This one is made up of Havoc, Polaris, Strong Guy, Multiple Man, and Wolfsbane. And it feels like if we do get X-Factor in the MCU, it's very possible that, you know, Kevin Feige decides to go this way with the team. And this book right here, I think, is a great collector's item. It reeks of nostalgia. I feel like this is a book that every 90s collector had at the time when it came out. And the best part about this one, if you look at the price window right there, between two to seven dollars. You can 100% find multiple copies of this one in dollar bins easily. Uh, and you can also find this one easy buy it now is for a dollar, two dollars, things like that. So another book that I would love to add to my collection on a budget. All right, moving on now to my next pick, which is actually going to be Silver Surfer number one from 1987. First issue of Silver Surfer volume three written by Steve Englehart. And I absolutely love this book. I mean, Silver Surfer is a great character. We all believe that he's going to come to the MCU and all of his books are extremely expensive. But this one right here is still a great book in my opinion and very, very 
affordable. I think that this particular Silver Surfer run is the best one we've ever got in Marvel comic books, and I really, really like this book. I think it's a very cool cover, features a lot of the players that are gonna have a role in the Silver Surfer universe between the Fantastic Four and Galactus. And also, this is actually the first meeting of Silver Surfer and Frankie Ray Nova. They actually have a relationship later on in comic books, and you know, if we start to see Silver Surfer and Frankie Ray Nova in the MCU, this will actually be their first meetup. So there's a lot of speculative value for a book like this as well. Price window I have for this one is between eight and $14. I've certainly seen this one in dollar bins. I've seen it in back issues priced as low as $5. And you can definitely get this thing on Buy It Now. It's on eBay around the $10 range. Which takes us to my last pick. And my last pick is going to be, of course, X-Men number one from 1991, the first issue of the Jim Lee X-Men series. And this book right here is a must have in every collection. If I'm starting a comic book collection today and I only have a budget of $100, well, one of those slots is definitely going to be dedicated to this book right here, X-Men number one. Now there are five covers to choose from and I'm gonna leave it to you guys to choose whichever one you want. But if you do want a min-max, the cover with Cyclops and Wolverine, the second book you see on the slide actually has a cameo appearance of Omega Red. So I think that that might be the biggest speculative book that you may want to get out of this bunch. But if it's up to me to pick, I'm definitely going with the third book you see, which is the Magneto cover, because the spread it has in that one is absolutely the best. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Price windows for these, I have between five to $12. Definitely books you can find in LCSs all the time. They're always gonna be priced either a dollar, maybe $4, maybe $5, maybe marked up to 10. But I think that you can find this book easily for $5 and it'll be a great addition to your collection. So recapping all the books, here is my collection that I've put together. And I think personally, this is a pretty cool one. My 10 books are Web of Spider-Man number one, Spider-Gwen number one, X-Men 11, Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine number one, War Machine number one, ASM 347, X-Factor 1, X-Factor 71, Silver Surfer 1, and X-Men number one. Price window for this one, you know, if I'm being crafty and I'm hunting in LCSs, I think I can easily put this collection together for $89. Or if I'm being really, really impatient and I need to go to eBay right now and I need this to be delivered to my house tomorrow, maybe I have to spend around $144. But I think that generally speaking, you can put a great collection together for around $100. And these are the books that I personally personally would pick for mine. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know what you guys think. What books would you pick if you were starting a collection on a budget for $100? I thought it would be fun of making it a game to have to choose 10 books. I mean, if I really had to do it, I might just pick one $100 book, but that wouldn't have been a fine video. Anyways, that is all I got. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.